Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Success Academy. I'm Sheshan Dias and in this video, we are going to look at 8 tips that will help you get to a band 7 plus score in your IELTS writing exam. Alright, so the writing task can be daunting for a lot of people regardless of whether you are doing the general or the academic exam. Now if you are looking to get a specific idea on the marking criteria, the writing structures for letters, reports or essays, we have done separate videos on all of these. So make sure to go and check out our past videos. But in this video, what we are going to discuss are some specific things that you need to do, some specific techniques, tricks that you can follow to get to the best possible score at the ILTS writing exam, regardless of whether you're doing the general or the academic exam. So without further ado, let's start looking at tip number one. The first tip is that you always have to write up to the point. See, in the ILTS exam, your word count is limited. You have to write 150 words for part one, 250 words for part two. Even if you exceed this word count, you will be writing 200 words, 250 words maximum for part one, 300 to 350 words for part two. So your word count is limited. So the more jargon you write, the more you beat around the bush, the less actual or factual information you're going to include in your essay. You're going to limit the points that are related to the question or that are directly linked to the question in your writing task. And keep in mind, you're only going to get marks for the points which you write that are related to the question. Anything else, it's just redundant, all right? So everything you write has to be directly related to the question that has been asked. For example, if you get an essay topic that says, scientific discoveries have benefited mankind. If you start by writing a definition for science, and if you start talking about the evolution of science and the different scientists, it has no relation to the question. It has no connectivity to the question. But if you start outlining the scientific discoveries and how they have benefited mankind or how they have disrupted our day-to-day -day lives, that would be more related to the question. So regardless of whether you are doing general part one or part two or academic part one or part two, always make sure that anything you write is up to the point, All right? Tip number two, you have to know where to give your opinion and where not to give your opinion. For example, if you're writing answers for academic part one and you're writing a report, if you say, I think in my opinion and you try to give justifications or if you try to give reasons where reasons are not given and you try to formulate reasons you're going to lose a lot of marks because part one in academic writing you don't have to include your personal views at all however the essay is driven mainly by your personal views so there if you haven't included your personal experiences your personal opinion on the essay topic there too you're going to lose a significant amount of marks so you need to keep in mind there are places where your opinion is important there are places where your opinion should not be used specifically in both general and academic part one your personal opinion is not of use however when it comes to essay writing you certainly have to include your opinion all right so make sure you understand these differences and if you go through the structure you will get a better understanding as well of what exactly you have to include in part one and part two. So when you're including your opinion, understand where you have to include it and include it accordingly, all right? Tip number three goes hand in hand with tip number one. So tip number one said, always write to the point. Tip number three is link your answers to the question and link your points to each other. Basically, maintain coherence and cohesion, all right? You have to link your answers by using linking words or cohesive devices as much as possible. So when we spoke about essay writing, we discussed whenever you are writing a body paragraph, there are four mandatory cohesive devices that you must use. Outside of this, there are many other cohesive devices that you can use. 
So for example, if you are starting our first paragraph, we would say first of all or to begin with. When we are giving an example, we would say for example or for instance. When we are concluding our paragraph, we could say in summary or in a nutshell. By using these cohesive devices, these linking words, we are showing the connectivity between our sentences and the relevance that they have within our essay. In order to connect them back to the question, again, we can use connecting words. And overall, we have to make sure that we maintain coherence and cohesion. We maintain the overall connectivity throughout our writing tasks. This applies to both part one and part two. Tip number four is use formal vocabulary. For academic writing, this does not change at all. Regardless of whether you're writing part one or part two, you always have to write formal vocabulary. Right? There is no informality in academic writing. However, if you are doing the general exam and you are writing a letter, if you're writing an informal letter, there you might be able to make a few exceptions and use informal vocabulary as and when needed. But again, overall, you're still maintaining 80 to 90 percent formal vocabulary. There is no need to go completely informal, even if it is an informal letter. So in any case, for all your writing tasks, make sure you maintain formal vocabulary. This means you can't use contractions. You can't say don't, won't, can't. It's always going to be cannot, will not, would not, do not. All right. You can't use contractions. You also can't use slang. You can't say I spent a few bucks. You have to say I spent a few rupees, right? You can't say we did a lot of stuff. You need to say we did a lot of activities, right? So similarly, you can't use a lot of slang. You always have to try and use formal vocabulary. You should also try and avoid idioms as much as possible. Idioms are another form of informal vocabulary. Therefore, instead of saying he was beating around the bush, you could say he was talking about points that were not necessary, right? Or instead of saying it was raining cats and dogs, you could say it was raining very heavily. All right. So idioms are not phrases that you should use in your essay report or letter. You should always try and use formal vocabulary. And keep in mind, when we say formal vocabulary, especially when it comes to academic writing, a lot of people believe that we can't give our opinion and write in first person. We can't say I believe it is my opinion. We can't use this sort of thing. But in reality, you are actually encouraged to give your first person opinion. You have to write by saying, I think this is what it is. Or in my opinion, it is my firm belief. And you are supposed and encouraged to give your opinion. All right. So overall, just keep in mind, there is no using informal vocabulary. You have to use formal vocabulary wherever possible. All right. Tip number five is understand the structures. Look, you have different structures for letter writing, report writing, if you're doing the academic exam and essay writing. So you have to have a clear understanding about the different structures when you are writing any of these answers. If you're not following a proper structure, if you're not following a structure that has been set out by IELTS, then you're going to lose marks. So we have done a number of videos, like I said before, on the IELTS writing structures. So make sure to go and check out those videos and get a proper understanding of the writing structures. Look, you don't have to just check out our videos. You can go and research the Internet. You have all this information for free on the British Council and IDP websites. You can go and check those out as well. But overall, just keep in mind, it doesn't matter where you get the information from. Just make sure it's from a credible source and that you understand these structures properly, because if you write according to the proper structure, you will get a band seven plus score. All right. Tip number six is to try and use quality vocabulary. Look, you have to build up your vocabulary leading up to the IELTS exam. Vocabulary plays a huge part in helping you get to the relevant band score. 
all right so you have to try and use as much uncommon words as possible but that being said that doesn't mean you always use words you don't necessarily understand because if you use words in the wrong places more marks will be cut than not using those words at all you're better off writing a quality answer with simple vocabulary as opposed to making mistakes trying to write less common vocabulary so if you don't understand the meanings of certain words or the context of using certain words then don't use them at all you're better off writing a quality answer in the proper structure using simple vocabulary don't try to use vocabulary you don't understand and mess it up but that being said wherever possible try to use quality vocabulary especially cohesive devices are an easy way to go about this because there are so many cohesive devices that you can use and so by using these devices you're showing the examiner look i have a list of vocabulary i have a list of quality vocabulary that i have used in the proper places so i deserve to go for a higher band score but keep in mind just learning the cohesive devices is not going to cut it because anybody would understand that these are the easiest vocabulary to memorize and use so you need to be well read you need to have a good knowledge of the english language and even if you don't if you have 2 to 3 months for the exam you can actively start learning new vocabulary and try to improve your ielts writing score All right tip number 7 is to manage your time look you have 20 minutes for part 1 40 minutes for part 2 a lot of students that come to me for the first time or who have done the exam previously and have failed one of the biggest things that they struggle with is time management and one of the main reasons for this is that they take too much time trying to answer part 1 look you cannot under any circumstance take more than 20 minutes for part 1 you have to finish it within 15 minutes or less if possible or a maximum of 20 minutes and then move on to part 2 the moment your 20 minutes are over you need to switch you need to start doing part 2 because the essay is very creative the essay is enjoyable to write and you need that 40 minutes to write the essay you need to enjoy it you need to debate the points you need to have fun with writing this essay my personal philosophy is get rid of that part 1 as soon as possible 15 minutes 60 minutes at best just try and finish it off because it's not that hard right once you understand the writing structure regardless of whether you're writing the letter or you're writing the report once you understand the structure it's very easy to write it fast because you're just looking at the question and you're writing the answer there's nothing to think there's nothing to think outside the box when you are writing the answer for both part 1 questions regardless of whether it's general or academic essay writing however requires you to think creatively and that takes time so i feel where a lot of people go wrong a lot of people they make mistakes because they don't manage their time effectively in part 1 so as soon as you realize 20 minutes are over you need to move on to part 2 you need to start writing the essay all right so manage your time effectively 20 minutes for part 1 40 minutes for task 2 that's your timing stick to it practice and ensure that you practice both tasks together and you're able to complete it within the given time frame keep in mind if you don't complete your answer within the given time frame and you've given a half written answer you will lose more marks even if your vocabulary is good in the half answer you have written the person that wrote the complete answer with basic vocabulary will get a higher band score than you so it's very very important that you complete your answer and in order to do so you need to manage your time effectively all right the final tip tip number 8 prepare for each task without assumptions prepare for each task without assumptions means that you prepare for every single type of question that may turn up during the exam for example if you take report writing you have bar charts pie charts line graphs 
tables, process diagrams, maps. That's six different types of questions. Certain teachers might say, okay, during this period, you will get only pie charts or line graphs. So prepare just for those two types of questions. Nobody knows, nobody knows what type of question you're going to get. All right, now these days, a lot of students have told me, this is not for writing, but a lot of students have told me for their reading exam, they've been getting a specific type of question. They've been getting a lot of matching headings and matching information type questions. And this has been a recurring pattern over the past few months. Now I tell this to students, but at the same time I say, don't only focus on those questions, focus on everything. Maybe do a few extra questions in this target type question, but don't overtly stress on those and neglect the others, all right? Maybe at a certain period of time, they, they give you a specific type of question. Maybe during the period of, let's just say, for example, the period of January to March, they have given mainly, predominantly, process diagram type questions and maps. All right? But that doesn't mean that can't change. They might suddenly decide, okay, now we're going to give a line graph. We might give a pie chart. We don't know. The teachers don't know. Trust me, no teacher on the internet, regardless of how confidently they give you these assumptions, nobody knows. All right. So don't listen to assumptions. Practice all types of questions so that regardless of what question you get, you will be able to answer confidently. If you take Letter writing, you have informal letters, semi-formal letters, or formal letters. Practice for all three types of letters. If you take essays, you have advantages and disadvantages type questions. You have problem and solution for all of these different essay types, for all of the report types, all of the letter types. Practice individually. This will take you a lot of time, which is why if you know you're going to do the ILTS exam, you need to start practicing at least three months out. Forget about everything else. If you're going abroad, it means you're leaving everything here. So forget about your job, forget about everything else. Focus 100% on the exam and practice, all right? So when you are confident with each type of question that may come for the exam, you have no worries when you're going to face the exam. My final bonus point to you is to practice as much as possible. You're never going to get good at essay writing unless you practice essay writing. Sometimes you might even be a good speaker, but when it comes to writing, you might go blank. Trust me, this is a very real problem. So in order to keep your writing skills sharp, in order to generate good vocabulary, in order to have a clear understanding of how to organize your answers, structure your answers, generate good examples, write informal vocabulary, you need to practice. So my advice is if you know you're going to do the IELTS exam, start practicing diligently at least three months out, all right? That three months is more than enough time for you to get in perfect shape to get into a band seven plus score. All right, so I hope that made sense to you. With that being said, we are done with today's video. I sincerely hope that you gained something of value in this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to our channel, share this with a friend, click that notification bell so that you know every time we put out a video. Trust me, for the next three months, if you are planning to do the ILTS exam, we have plenty of content lined up for you. So make sure to click that notification bell. And also, if you have any questions, if there are any areas of the test that you are struggling with, make sure to drop those as comments down below so that we can understand what you're struggling with and create our videos accordingly in order to help you out in the best way possible. I mean, we are doing all this stuff for free and we genuinely want to help as many people get through the ILTS exam as successfully as possible and achieve your dreams of going abroad. So we sincerely hope you enjoy these videos and if you want personal coaching, if you want to be a part of our 10 day ILTS program, make sure to call the number below. If you're too busy to join a class and if you're too busy to dedicate two days a week, two hours a day to our 10 day ILTS program, you can purchase our video course and study in your own pace. So you wouldn't have to worry about coming to a class. You can just study whenever you are free. You also get free access to our information bank when you join our 10 day program or even if you purchase 
our video course for both of those make sure to call the number below so till our next video keep practicing Thank <laughs> you.